Now let's remember that in AC circuits we can get pretty far by just considering the amplitudes. So for the AC driven capacitor that we just dealt with, we found that it had a current um, as a function of time that basically looked like uh, the capacitance times omega times delta V max times cosine omega t. But if we just wanted to think about the amplitude of the current, it would be this. It's an oscillating, it's a sinusoid with an amplitude, c capacitance omega delta v max. So we could also write um, delta v max, the amplitude of the voltage that you apply equals, um, uh, let's see, this would be equal to I max is this, so delta V max would be I max over C omega. So that kind of looks like um, uh, Ohm's law, right? Equals I max times one over the capacitance times omega. So this thing is like an AC resistance if you're willing to not worry so much about uh, all the phases and everything. If you just want to know the amplitudes, if I apply a one volt peak to peak voltage, what peak to peak current will I get? You can actually apply just a standard what looks like Ohm's law. So this thing that looks like a resistance, it has the units of resistance, but we call it the capacitive reactance. And the big X is the symbol. So XC we define to be 1 over the capacitance times omega, which does end up having units of ohms. It is really a resistance. It really does work in this formula. It just shows you that a capacitor is different from a resistor. A resistor has a reactance. It's just the resistance. Right? For that, it's just R, and it's constant. But for a capacitor, you see that it depends on the frequency. Right? Its reactance, or its effective resistance in a circuit, depends on how fast the circuit is moving. It actually makes sense. If you think about really low frequency, you have a capacitor in the circuit here, and you take the frequency essentially to zero, you're talking about going essentially to DC circuits, very slowly varying that frequency. Well, this is an open circuit at DC. And there's basically nothing, nothing here. So its resistance should go very big. Well, sure enough, the capacitive reactance goes to infinity when you get the frequency really low. We have the frequency really high. It's constantly charging and discharging, charging and discharging. So it's like it's not even there. Right? So all the very fast charging, discharging, basically then the frequency is very high, the capacitive reactance is very small. So that's what's unique about capacitors, and in a minute you'll see about inductors, is that their behavior in the circuit depends on the frequency.